1995 saw the release of a straight-to-video sequel to the 1992 movie The Lawnmower Man. The sequel was called Lawnmower Man 2 Beyond Cyberspace. But was this a worthy successor to an otherwise okay movie? Or was it a load of sh Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome to my review, first time visit review for Lawnmower Man 2, Beyond Cyberspace. Yes, yesterday I brought you a review for Lawnmower Man, the first one. I hadn't watched that movie in 30 years, so go and check out that review, see how the film done. What's brought me about watching these is the fact that this week I did pick up the 101 films release of the Lawnmower Man collection, containing Lawnmower Man 1 and Lawnmower Man 2. No wonder they put Lawnmower Man 2 in this collection. I don't think anyone would want to buy this movie as a standalone film. So, what's the crack with this one? Yes, so three years later, straight to video sequel. Now, the 90s, that was an era for, era for a lot of straight to video movies. It was a big boom in the industry. And it used to make quite a bit of money for the companies. This film here, obviously, it is set after Lawnmower Man 1 and it actually opens with a revisit to the first Lawnmower Man film showing us what happened at the end of that movie with the explosion of the building and um, Ma um, the Lawnmower Man Job's escape or, or potential escape from cyberspace that he's in only we come to learn that he didn't escape cyberspace somehow he got put back into his body he's lost his legs he's got pulled out of the fire and the explosion he's had his face reconstructed obviously legs been amputated um, and he's now in a wheelchair looking like max headroom minus the makeup yes this film um, recasts job as Matt Frewer, who played Max Headroom. Patrick Bergen is the other top name in this film as the scientist guy. I can't remember the character's name. I don't really care to either. And returning from the first film is the character of Peter, the young boy who befriended Job in, in the context of that film. But this film, after this, this incident here, they, they pull him out of the burning wreckage. His face is rebuilt. Um... They do some work on him using cyberspace and technology and he enters back into that realm but he's in his own body at the same time and he's sat in a chair doing stuff and they this company wants him to build them this this triangular pyramid chip um, which will enable him to sort of take over cyberspace again. So this film here completely... Um, rejects the end of the previous film the first film ends fantastically and it's got a great ending a real good ending because the character of job gives that warning that that when he is in everything in the computer systems his birth call will be or his birth cry will be the ringing of every phone in the world simultaneously and that is how the first film ends right on that note and it's a fantastic ending fantastic Stephen King cannot end a story, but that's got a fantastic ending to it. This one here kind of takes a few steps back and says, well, hold on a minute. We're going to put Joe back into his body. Only the thing is, have they forgotten that in that first film, his body was wasted away? It was nothing. It was turned to dust. It was like the old fella at the end of um, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. How he got back in his body, I will never know. Anyway. So Job is still trying to take over cyberspace and the computer world and all this sort of a thing. Um, young Peter, the young boy, he's now grown up by a couple of years and we've jumped forward in time, that visually in time, that looks like a future, a, a, um, a, a, a future that, that, well, every film in that era looks like this. Films like Highlander 2, you know, the city is dark, it's, it's, it's wet, it's 
um, they've got fires on every street corner out of um, barrels and this sort of thing going on. Futuristic looking vehicles, futuristic, futuristic cityscape. I've got no idea where this came from because the first film is grounded, grounded in reality, so to speak. You feel like it is set now, but this film jumps us forward visually to a, a kind of run-down future that's always dark unless they're out elsewhere, which isn't in the city, when sometimes the sun might shine a bit. So you've got that. Now you've got this new um, uh, scientist guy who's worked on this chip and they need him to um, stop Job from activating it and all this sort of a thing and, you know, corporations, etc., etc., the film is rubbish. The film is crap. That's the big takeaway from this movie, right? Like I said, had 101 Films released Lawn Mower Man, had anyone released Lawn Mower Man 2 as a separate film, you wouldn't have bought it. It's in this set. You have to buy Lawn Mower Man 1. You get it if you want Lawn Mower Man 1. And you're stuck with it. Unless you want to throw away the box and all that sort of thing. But yeah, so it's not a good film. As for the special effects, yes, when they go into the... Um, future into the the cyberspace um it looks a bit better than what it did in that first film although the first film had a larger budget although the cyberspace stuff in this film isn't as vast as what it is in that previous film they they counter this cyberspace world for the real world in a sense that when you go into cyberspace it turns into visually the real world so that they could film it in the real world and real people running around in the real world rather than having these sort of um, computeristic looking avatars that they had in this film. So they cheapened the budget there. Matt Frewer, um, you know, at the end of the first film, the character of Jacob is fully cybernetic -y looking, computer generated. In this, it's Matt Frewer in the real world and in the cybernetic world as well. In this overly elaborate gold suit. The end of the film sees him fighting with Patrick Bergen with swords. They're fighting with swords within the computer realm before coming out of it. At the very end of the film, um, the character of Job reverts. Reverts back to his, his, his normal self, shall we say. A simpleton. A simpleton. A retard, if you will. I know that's not a PC word. Not allowed to say that. But you probably were back then when this came out. Anyway, he reverts back to that kind of a, 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 an individual, right? Minus the legs. Yeah, he's in a wheelchair. So the film absolutely takes you nowhere. And the cycle just goes back. It's pointless. This I don't get this sequel. I don't get this sequel, right? Am I meant to just forget the end of the first film? Is that what I'm meant to do? He went back into... How does he regenerate his body? Makes no sense, right? It's a load of rubbish. It's, it's, it, you know, the young boy, the time, the time jump visually, but the boy's around, you know, a couple of years older. This is the boy who was in Last Action Hero, by the way. Yeah, it, it, I, can't, I can't get my head around it. You know, his, his mum has died. The world is completely changed visually, aesthetically, but he's only a couple of years older. And he's now become a, a one of these cyberpunk kids kind of things, you know, that, that live homeless in a in an abandoned train in train subways and um, with his mates, and they hack into computers. They're computer hackers. It's almost as if this was a completely different script that was written, but kind of tweaked to turn it into a Lawnmower Man sequel. Yeah, this this isn't a worthwhile film. It's a first time visit. It's a last time visit. I can't see any way, shape or form that I would ever, ever, ever consider revisiting this sequel again. It really taints the original. And the original's got enough problems of its own. Although I quite enjoyed it. Anyway, that's the Lawnmower Man sequel. Beyond Cyberspace, Jacob's War, whatever you want to call it. I will be back because I plan on sitting down and watching the director's cut of Lawn Mar Man 1 now. 38 minutes extra, apparently. Um, yeah, that will be a treat, wouldn't it? Anyway, I'll see you on the next one. It won't be that. I'll give it a few days before I visit that film.